I read so much script today. Good evening, everyone. Here we're, you know, when I, I presented, I thought it was going to be a quick night. I, I turned in my script around noon today, and I was the only one. And now we got my script and John's script and Ray's script if he shows up and Larry's yeah. script. That's a lot of scripts. At least well, mine's only nine pages because that's all I could finish today. Okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, I wonder if there's any value to reading Ray's script. Is there, under the assumption that he didn't write art direct. Uh, first off, is there I want, anything we can yeah. really get out okay. of that? It was, yeah. like, it was yeah. great last week, but we got to see some art. Yeah. yeah. Let me. For, I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna look at at Ray's script here sure. and see if. Um, I mean, well, here I'll just show you. Um, I mean, there's there's more, and I'm always happy when there's more. You know, improvement, moving in the right direction, all that jazz. Um, there's not necessarily a ton. Page one, panel one, we have shadows. Then we have dark mm. shadows upon speck of dirt and dust falling. Mm. Then we have side of a coffin. Then we have the coffin lid slam shut. I mean, we, there's, there's more. And there's, there's, I, I would say actually, this is, yeah, we could, we could yeah. do this. Yeah, this is, this is readable. So, yeah. Okay. All right. Sure. So that's, last that's, that's, time it was, yeah. it was fine, but we couldn't do it without it. Yeah, yeah, I guess absolutely. we could have done it without it, but we would have been even more confused. <laughs> yeah, <but> just, <laughs> nothing but dialogue. Well, you can figure out what's yeah. going on with the dialogue. Like, yeah. it's, it's good enough a lot of the time, yeah. but like, yeah. Names and characters. All right, Danny. Uh, all right, well, what do you want? Palace, Harpies, uh, or okay. Larry? So, okay. Palace, I'm assuming, had some minor revisions, and then you worked it through the end. Yep. Harpies, uh, John, um, is this a continuation or a rewrite? Rewrite. And then we've got Ray's thing, and what else have we got? Uh, we have Larry's thing. What's Larry's he, thing? Is it Moon he, Baby again? He, he rewrote the thing from last time with the, the, no. the guy bursting out of the fry. Right. Oh, it's, okay, the guy bursting out of the fry. Yeah, that yeah. again. Okay. It's a continuation. So. Oh, okay, a continuation. Okay, well, this is, the ele- this is the page 11 that's supposed to sell us on the story, right? Oh, I can't wait for that. <laughs> I mean, so, yeah, I've been on that. I've been hanging on that cliff for a week. So let I me mean, watch that. I almost feel like 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 Palace is. Uh, <sighs> I mean, all I did was just you know I, I redid the fight scene. I I, I just touched it up. I just so touched let's it do up. Palace second. Okay, all right. And then we'll do Harpies, and okay. Todd is going to like just wow us with anything that's something like that really good long food dropcake zeppelin scene okay. and we'll all be very happy all right Pretty john no spoilers i want to have a good evening <laughs> there we go let's see chrome tab uh dirtland saga okay so here we will zoom in a bit all right larry who would you like to narrate yeah. this wonderful story Oh, Danny's pretty good at that. So. All right, Danny. All right, uh, I was going to narrate for one other thing. I read a full, I, I broke down a full feature today. Oh wow! So, there you go. Um, right. Yeah, nice. All right, and, and then we need a, a Masao and a Sig. Yeah. Right. Uh, I'll, I'll, hmm. I'll be Sig. John, you can be Masao. Okay. Sure, that works. Yeah. All Page right. Page eleven, panel one, medium shot. Masao looks downward, feeling lost. Sig chuckles again, blowing smoke from his head around him. I feel like I meant to do something important. Most of us do, but few of us act. There's true words, Larry. You've been hanging around the writers group for a while. I can see. There's always <laughs> some of those like really substantial Moldy lines, which I actually like when Moldy does that. Yeah. <laughs> so There's... you learn the right thing from Moldy. Yeah. There's always something to do waiting for you out in the world. Panel two, medium shot. Miss Al looks towards Sig, baffled. So I just go out and find something to do? That's your sage advice? Shaman, not sage. There's a difference. You want a sage? Go to the realm of John. Panel three, close up. Sig's words click in Miss Ao's brain as he exclaims Sig last, Sig's last words out loud. The realm of John? Is that the realm of panty shots? There you go. <laughs> Can they help me? Panel four, close up. Sig blows out a puff of smoke from his head and retorts sarcastically. 
but you would never get there. So forget about it. Not unless he came out of there. See, that would be an interesting story. Or, you know, but the way is very treacherous and you will have to fight three dragons and then you've actually promised someone something that you can then pay off. Uh, page 12, panel one, wide shot. Masao moves away from Sig with a satisfied look on his face. Sig looks on confused. Sorry. Sig looks on confused as he watches him leave. Where are you going? The realm of John, of course. No, you fool, it's dangerous. Panel two, wide shot. Same view as the last panel. Misao is now off panel and yells to Sig, thanking him. And Sig tries to stop him one last time. Oh, you could also pull a skinny and have a snake come out of a pussy. Thanks, Shaman <laughs> Sig. That was wow. very helpful. Fool, did you hear nothing? There is only death on that path. Panel three, close up on Sig, he sighs. And he's gone, that fool. Panel four, on a new page for some reason. There we go. Close up <laughs> on Sig's nose and eyes as he frowns and speaks to himself. He'll never make it out of the shag forest, not past them. See, that sounds like a location from a John Lamont script. <laughs> <laughs> Page 13, panel one, wide shot. Masao walks out from the wishbone archway as Clot greets him with questions. Who, who, have we met Clot yet? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Met Clot. Oh, he was the guy from before? Yeah. Yes, he, he, he was an exposition oh. dude. So I guess, a person you can switch over to Clot since Sig's out okay. of the script now. So. Well, I'll be. You look rather happy. I'll take it to Shaman. I'll take it the Shaman had good news. Uh, yes, my boy. I have to go on a long adventure, I assume. You sound, or it sounds exciting. So where did you need to go? Panel two, close up on Masao. He crawls forward and Clot bounces close beside him. Masao gives a smug look as Clot smiles back. Shaman Zig told me to go to the realm of John and ask the sage my questions. So off I go. Ah, the realm of John, how exciting. Panel three, close up on Clot. He stops suddenly, rolling his eyes sideways, thinking out loud. The realm of John. Realm of John. Realm of John? Panel four, close up on Clot. He goes into a full panic. Realm of John! <laughs> page 14. Why are there no page breaks? <laughs> Which new pages? Huh? Uh, Panel one, medium shot. Clot jumps. Larry doesn't the... believe in them. He's never had one in one of his scripts. Okay, that, that's yeah. a fair explanation. Hmm. There's not an excuse. Uh, panel one, medium shot. Clot jumps in front of Misao, screaming in full terror. Misao looks utterly confused. Stop! Whoa! No go! Bad! Bad path! You die! My word! Are you all right, boy? Panel two, medium shot. Clot gets dead serious and leans up into Masao's face. Masao looks more confused as Clot's face turns extremely angry, his eyes going bloodshot. Stop it with the boy. My word, are you ill, lad? I know what Masao reminds me of. It's how Mulby writes, um, what's his name, from Guinevere. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's what it sounds exactly. Like. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Actually, this would be better uh, if it was just Gatsby as a yeah. fry. There you go. Uh, panel three, wide shot. <laughs> Claude is overcome with emotion, starts bashing his face repeatedly against the ground. <laughs> now looks on, even more confused. Goodness, man, get a hold of yourself. <laughs> Panel four, medium shot. Clot slowly creaks his neck back to coldly stare at Misao. That's drawable. There you go. Misao, <laughs> looking toward him in the right foreground, just smiles awkwardly back. Man. Why, yes, clearly the boy thing was troubling you. So for now, let's pretend. Pretend. <laughs> 
And a five, medium shot from the side, Clot lets out a sigh, giving up the fight to be addressed as an adult. Clot lets out a sigh, giving up the fight to be addressed as an adult. That should be a period. Misao continues to smile. There we go. Sure. Fine. Pretend. Great. Now, what seem to have concerns about my journey? Page 15. And a one, medium shot. Clot looks sternly up at Misao and starts to monologue. Miss Ao chimes in at the end. Concerns? Where do I start? To get to the realm of John, we have to head to the edge of the Shag Forest, straight in to the Arachnidville, then over the great desert of Kitchen, down the towering Hall of Darkness, and then we get to the realm of John. Assuming we don't die anywhere along the path, the realm of John is a den of serpents. Oh, I just, yeah, Realm of John's the bathroom, isn't it? Is, I'm trying to figure out where the serpents are. I, I'm it. sure he'll come up with something, but it's going to be a... Of course it is. John's a toilet. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know the way. Panel two, medium uh, shot. Clot looks dumbfounded as at Misao as he smiles dumbly back. Did you not hear the part about the danger and death? Of course. Then why the smiles? Panel three, medium shot. Misao smiles smugly. Clot looks away, still concerned. Because you are here. Obviously, the journey is possible. Ah! Well, you see, it was actually my friend that made the journey. Panel four, close up. Misao leans closely over Clot, who looks away, a sad expression on his face. Thing is, he made it back, but he wasn't the same. It changed him. He can't be that bad, can he? Page 16, oh, wide God. shot. Our heroes enter a clearing in the carpet forest with a mound of piled debris in the middle, lit from a beam of sunlight from above. Seed, a seed from hamster food with large crossed googly eyes and a triangle mouth, stands up on the mound, belting out meme phrases. Misao and Clot look toward him in the foreground, their backs to the reader. Ah, uh, I guess I'll read this one. That's no moon. Never gonna give you up. I'll have what she's having. Ain't got no time for that. No whammy. Well, he seems friendly. Yes, very friendly. How many Star Wars lines are you borrowing? Ton. Page 17, panel one, medium shot. Seed looks down the mound as Clot and Misao approach. He greets them and Misao replies. Hello there. Hi, good to meet you. Panel two. Panel two. Hold on, I messed that up. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all right. Uh, Larry okay. doesn't page break his pages, so I'm not surprised you got all lost. Right. Down, down. I'm down. down. I'm going down. Hey, okay. you know, I, oh, oh. you could also comment that he's not using a monospace font, but at least his words are correct. I've already commented. Okay, well, panel three. I didn't have time to change it. Oh, yeah, you're right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yes, excellent. Panel two, medium shot, okay. same as the last panel. Seed turns away from the two, a look of disgust on his face. Misao looks confused. How? If it's the same, how does he turn away and we also see his face? He is looking towards there, Ray. Uh, he's By the way, that? Ray, we were we 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 took a peek and uh, we were delighted that there was art direction. So yeah, I, I added it in. Right. I was like, okay, yeah, I guess I'm, I'm working with writers, not just myself. So I better yeah. fix it. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, All right. Did 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 Masao uh, deliver his line? No, uh, did I say something wrong? There you go. Panel three, medium shot. Same as the last shot. Seed drops his head downward, casting himself in shadow, which may or may not be relevant because we probably can't see his face. Looking away from Miss Ao and Clot in the background. And now we can see his face. It was the same shot, so. Clot, it's your line. I, am, am I Clot? Yeah. I told you. His mind is baked. 
must be some way to get through to him. Nah, he's cooked. When he got back, he kept talking about five lights or something. Man, he borrowed from everything. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. He borrowed from everything. L4. <laughs> See, oh, turns to face Masao and Claude. Screaming angrily, they edge backwards in shock. There are four lights. <laughs> Page 18, and a lot. I'm glad you are enjoying this. I don't know the reference. That's, that's, that's Star, Star Trek. Trek. <laughs> that's Star Trek. Next generation. Yeah. Yeah. It's from the episode uh, in which Picard gets tortured. By yeah, I'm Spaces. trying to remember that one. Yeah. yeah, he gets captured by the Cardassians that torture By the fascist space yeah. lizards. Yeah. 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 Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on. Panel one, medium shot. Masao looks depressingly towards Claude as Seed continues to freak out in the background. He really is gone, isn't he? I told you! I'll never get to the realm of John then. It's full Jesus of stars. Christ. That's a no for me, dog. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you took every movie known in sci-fi and just pasted the little clips together. Yeah, I, I, will, I will give Larry credit. Someone will find that fun. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, his memes are dated, but someone yeah. will find that funny. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Panel two, <laughs> medium shot. Klopp moves in closer to Masao, petting him on the head with an extended piece of his fluff. There, there, buddy. It will be okay. <laughs> no, I'm doomed to be lost, forever wandering aimlessly through this life. Sigh. There is someone else we can ask, but... Panel three, medium shot. Miss Sao perks up at the news, but Claude is concerned. We could go ask Johnny Eight Legs in Arachnaville. I know he hears the safe road, or knows the safe road. Well, hot dog, what are we waiting for? Off to Arachnaville. There's a small issue, though. Panel four, close up. Clot flashes fear across his face. Johnny will probably horribly murder us. He is Don Cockroach's top enforcer. So high he's got his own town. We probably won't even make it to his web. Cockroach. Yeah. Uh, I stand correct. Page 19, panel one, close up. Misao closes his eyes and smiles. No worries. Onward, good sir. Panel two, close up, same view. He opens his eyes to find C directly in front of him, staring in the eyes. Staring him in the eyes. One does not simply walk into Arachnaville. That was your payoff? Sure. I mean, we had to work like, in a fantasy movie. <laughs> Are you, did you just sit down in front of a meme generator and come up with these? <laughs> no, <laughs> it yeah. just wasn't a great payoff. Yeah. All the parts are they're supposed to be there are there. <laughs> Panel three, medium shot. Masao lunges backwards in surprise, bumping into Clot. Seed smiles oddly at them. Um, what is it now? Beats me. I told you he's crazy. Panel four, close up on Seed's face. He smiles creepily. Oh Found God. the way I did. Help you, I will. Find your friend. Oh Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Is Yoda talking? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. All right. Well, we have Larry's very original script. Um, there that, was... um, the, the only thing I have to say to that is that there had better be like a phone on the in the bathroom floor that's like playing Netflix like on a loop or something. Uh, and that's why he went crazy. I found... Otherwise, I don't know how you're going to pay all that off. I found my character sheet for the characters that I wrote a long time ago. And, awesome. Uh, and uh, they got their... Uh, there's another character that was supposed to be with Seed, but I cut him out. Uh, they got their powers from the internet, magically. So that's why All you right. keep the well, memes. We have characters uh, who yeah. are trying to get someplace. So we have some conflict and uh, there they're, you know, they're warnings of great danger and some comedy elements and that's that's great you know i'm glad to see you branching off in that direction comedy is challenging to write so good work okay 
stuff totally happens. Um, and it seems like this adventure it has something resembling a goal and a path. John. Uh, it was funny at times. I laughed at times. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, constructives. Um, I feel like you're leaning too heavy on other movies. Uh, I mean, it, it's okay sometimes, but like I feel like every line has multiple references, and it's it's ending up being like I don't know, like scary movie. Yeah, 14? I guess. Yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I, but other than that, you know, um, I mean, that that's all I got. I guess, yeah. Anyone else? Um, uh, uh, John, do you want to go? To well, I was just going to finish my earlier quote. It was not funny at times and i did not laugh at times there you go um i i do like how you grab defeat from the jaws of victory and narrowly avoided giving your protagonist a character arc uh <laughs> because the second 10 pages feel a lot like the first 10 pages um not so much stylistically obviously because you're you're still this is a comedy script so you succeeded there but um in, in terms of the plot and the complete lack of character development um th this felt very much like the first 10 pages go to a place talk to a dude ignore everyone uh find a way to walk forward like I, i'm i'm not seeing where this character is going to go by the end of your series, and we're nearly at the end of your first issue. But we aren't. Well, sure, but you also promised this would be an excellent payoff, explaining what's going to happen, and the rest of the conversation with the cigarette butt went nowhere. <laughs> Except yeah. now, instead of going to the shag forest, wow. he's going to a bathroom. Yes. I know, we haven't even seen the shag forest yet. This is not how one does adventure stories. Um, but yeah, that was it. Like the character doesn't change. He doesn't respond to his environment. He's maniacally and idiotically moving forward, despite the fact he was literally born today. Um, in spite of all of the warnings and threats for no reason that I can think of. Yeah. I prefer my comedies to try to be a real story. So. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure quite how to fix it. I mean, obviously, you could just take out all the other movie lines. Although, I mean, or, we would actually lose something because some of them were were, were, were pretty punchy. Um, but, fly out to space and nuke it from orbit. There you go. Yeah, you it's the only way that. to be sure. John. It's the only way to be sure. Um, hmm. I mean. Yeah, at some point, I mean, I mean, this is like 20 pages in. You're, you're going to have to present a conflict that I'm concerned about and a character that I attach a, a decent amount of emotion to. Positive or negative. Don't yeah, tell Larry what to do, Preston. All right, fair enough. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I agree that that would be a good thing. If that was <laughs> yeah. well, anyway. Anyway, there we go. Uh, anyone else got anything else? Or we move it on to the next one. I like the palace of the Golden <laughs> All right, palace. Okay, here we go. I guess I'll just say that the references I didn't get, I found funny. The references I did get, I kind of like rolled my eyes and groaned at. I, I was actually pretty okay with the meme thing. And if your payoff is one does not simply walk into a rack and bill, that's fine. Whatever you were going for for the other one didn't seem to pay off as well. That like, if you're establishing that Arachnoville is scary, you succeeded at that with the meme. So you know that was a fine payoff for that. But there was literally no content in what that guy said otherwise. And Arachnoville had better be scary if that's what you're going for, at least in a comedic stick Gary way. It could be actually you know. scary. 
like lots of comedy things do horror really well. They both rely on timing. True. Yeah. So I would say that that meme line would pay off, assuming that Arachnidville pays off. <laughs> All right. I will. Uh, well, Larry, why don't you narrate for us? Well, question: hey. Why don't you cast everyone else then? Okay. Um, let's see. I'll be Gretchen. She doesn't have many lines. Um, and, uh, John, you can be Thora and Danny, you can be Dudley. Sure thing. And Roy, you can be Bobby. Ray. <laughs> All right, Larry, whenever you're ready. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, let's see. Page 14, panel one. I'll also zoom in a little bit. There you go. Foreground. Edmund's face shows his dismay as he gallops his horse away from Thora. Background. Bobby blocks Dudley's sword swing with his shield, and Gretchen runs him through with her spear. My lord. Yeah. Uh, 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 a ra and a clang, and then a body. Death to the queen's knights. Do we have a Thor? Oh, your time ends now, Edmund. Ooh, it's heroic Thor today. I love it. Yeah, and uh, Roy, you can now be Edmund. There you go. Page fifteen, panel one. Edmund gallops his horse away from the battle as enlarged Thora and Archimedes observe his retreat in frustration. You coward, get back here. Panel two. Archimedes opens a portal to hell from which swing demon bursts through it reverse forth. Screezak. Scathazak. There we go. Uh what? Yeah, I got to the panel first, John. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I guess that would help, because I'm like, what am I reacting to? <laughs> Thor's face shows her surprise as the demon flies over her head. What? Panel four, Edmund glances over his shoulder as the demon sweeps from above. What? what? See, that's how you do comedy, Larry. There you go. <laughs> that, that, that's situational comedy, though. It is different. Uh, page 16, panel 1. Demon tackles Edmund from the saddle of his horse. Screech! Huh? Panel 2, Edmund and the demons hit the ground rolling. Off! Panel 3, Edmund stands and draws his sword. The demon raises his hind feet and threatens him with his claws. <clears throat> Swing. Yes. <laughs> Look at that sexy page break, Larry. And the mono space font. Oh man, it's so relaxing to read. <laughs> <laughs> page 17, panel one. The demon swipes at Edmund with the claws of his right hand. Edmund responds by cleaving the demon's right arm in two above the elbow. Grrr. <clears throat> Panel two. Thora approaches Edmund still a few yards back from him as he decapitates the demon with the return swing of his sword. There we go. Uh, Panel three. The headless demon falls as Edmund turns to face Thora who draws her sword. Out here all by yourself? History will read that on this day, a woman single-handedly killed a chauvinist, and that is all that matters. Fuck yeah. <laughs> we have a demon. We have that lot. I'm so happy right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, page 18, panel 1. Swords drawn, Emin steps towards Thora, looking for a quick finish. She, she circles away defensively. Lay on, then. 
Panel two, Thora parries Edmund's sword thrust as he continues his aggression. Clang. There we go. Panel three, Sora uses the opportunity of their cross swords to sidekick Edmund in the gut. Off. Page 19, Edmund stumbles back as Thora moves towards him looking to finish the fight. Okay, this slide's even better. Well done, Preston. Oh, yeah. An eternity of serving succubus sluts in hell awaits you. <laughs> He might enjoy that, though. He might. Well, if it's hell, presumably he won't. Yeah. There we have a panel two. Uh, panel two, Thora swings her sword to decapitate Edmund's heat, but he ducks. Oh, head. Yeah, sorry. You mean decapitate Edmund? Yeah, it should be decapitate Edmund. <clears throat> yeah. We have a raw. But what if she wants to decapitate <laughs> his arm? There you go. Uh, sure. Yeah. I don't recall Edmund having multiple heads in the like, <laughs> previous few issues, but you know, yeah. Yeah. it's not an impossibility. This is a fantasy story. Raw. Uh, panel three. Edmund braces his sword against himself and runs through Sora in an attempt to drive the point home, but Sora side sidesteps. Die, bitch! Uh, page 20, panel 1. Recovering from their last moves, both turn to swing their swords towards the other, which meet with a resounding. Clang! Nice on the page turn. Page 21, panel 1. Swords crossed once more. Thora moves to deliver another kick, but Edmund sidesteps in her, her attempt. Yeah. Panel 2. Edmund cleaves into Thora's booted shin as she tries to withdraw her strike. Ah. Caught you, bitch. Panel 3. In, unable to stand on her broken leg, Thora holds her sword defensively as Edmund circles around her. Yield, and I shall take you before the queen in a victory procession. Never. Uh, page 22. Panel 1. Edmund uses the flat of his blade to sweep her feet out from under her. Suit yourself. Panel two, Thor falls to the ground. No. Panel three, Edmund stops his boot right, stomps his, stops his boot right into Thor's face. Good night, princess. Panel three, completely black panel. The queen will Our reward me Lord. for returning you alive. Uh, page 23, panel 1, completely black panel. Danny, you can be the queen. I leave it to you to ensure that her public execution be as painful and humiliating as possible to crush any remaining hopes this rebellion has. Panel 2, standing uh, in the throne room before Queen Erica and Samantha, who sits on the dice is above him. Edmund smiles as her jerks Thor's head up by the hair, naked and restrained by a freestanding pillory board that secures her head and her hands. Thora's face showcases her broken nose and bruised puppy eyes. Ugh. <laughs> well, pleasure, your highness. Uh, a couple of typos. Anyway, well, that's, that's, that's the story. It's what we got. All right, so I will lead this so that way Preston can take notes. Yeah. So we we gave Archimedes something to do, and we added dialogue to the fight scene and some stakes, and a whole bunch of stuff happened, and Thora got kidnapped. Um, Ray, you're being fidgety. Uh, what did you like about this? I really liked Thora's, uh, her dialogue was great. Yeah, it was uh, 
it showcased her personality pretty good. I don't know. I, and I like the introduction to the queen there too. It was good how it kind of faded to black and then you have the, the queen talking in the background. I like that uh, transition too. Uh, John. Um, I thought it was much improved over the last week's pages. Um, I like the way the fight scene played out. Uh, the the art direction and the choreography I know can get tricky as somebody who often tries to write choreography and art direction and to make the panels unique and interesting can be tricky. So um, I like that every panel in the fight was um, different and unique and had different things to emphasize and it wasn't just the same thing. So um, I like that. And I agree with Ray. I think the transitions in the fade to black or cut to black worked uh, better than what you did last time. Larry. Uh, decently paced fight scene. Okay. Um, constructives. Uh, let's start with Ray again. Um, I did notice that Edmund said bitch twice in a row. I was yeah, like, he well, did. Kind there of was, repetitive. There were there there were a couple of echoes in there. Yeah. Yeah. I like I, I thought like that was a little cheesy, but other than that, I don't know. I didn't find it that much else wrong with it. Just the some of the lines Edmund was saying was kind of like uh, one liners. Uh John. Um can't really think of anything right off the top of my head. Ooh, look at that. How about Larry? Um, I kind of liked it better without a lot of the dialogue before, but that's the only criticism I can think of. Fair enough. Um, for my part, I will say that while I liked... Um, I liked the fade to black. I mm -hmm. think having two of them on a page turn is a really bold move and perhaps a bit much. Um, what you could have uh, to replace the first one, because I think the second black panel is the best. Um, the, the the first one sort of robs Edmund of his moment of victory. Mm -hmm. And so that would be a reasonable replacement in terms of art direction. He, he, he could throw over his shoulder and we could have a shot of lady ass. Sure. There you go. Um, also, I noticed it was only 23, page, uh, 23 pages. Yes. And I think um, you missed a hell of a good opportunity. And I do not remember the pagination from this, but that, that bit when they both turn and have that last clash of their swords, that's mm -hmm. a page spread waiting to happen, dude. Okay. Like, All right, tomorrow. sure. All right, we could do that. Um, because this is like a big fight for Thor's ability to do something. And because you rendered Archimedes useful, which is also awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you for doing that. Like the character is there and he does something at the fight. Way to go. Um, because you're rendering everyone useful, it feels like what whatever allies Thora does have are here to help. Mm -hmm. So this is just her battle against this misogynist who's been plaguing her for three issues now. Right. Right. Uh, and it does feel climactic. So, yeah, that, that's a good use of a two-page spread, I think. Okay. So the last page we read was not page 24? It was page 23. Then I'll agree with Larry that I think the final frame of Thor in the pillory needs should be on the page turn because otherwise, as soon as we turn that page, you know, all eyes on tits and i think we're going to see that before we get to before you want us to even number okay. pages are on the page turn yes i'm aware of that i just lost count of it uh, that yes. was okay so yes i think his idea of making that a two-page spread would fix that other problem which i think that page would work better on an even numbered page all right cool yeah uh, all right, well, I guess I'll make those changes and we can call issue four done. So, hooray. Go team. Go team. Cool. All right, so next, um, 
Well, now that Ray's here, I'm not sure if we should read Ray's thing or John's thing. Um, I suspect, John, are you going to make me narrate your thing? Only if you want to. I don't mind narrating your thing. Um, All right, then you can narrate my thing. Cool. So <laughs> let's narrate John's thing and then do Ray's last. Is that okay with everyone's schedule? Fine with me. All right, we have Harpies. So, John, catch us up. What are we reading? Uh, okay, so we are picking up in the middle of the of Long Fu's fight on the airline uh, air airship. So we're actually going. Um, actually, no, I'm sorry. We are picking up when the Nazi brute throws her out of the airship. Right. She like spinning pile driver in midair and then landed on him and survived. Uh, that's like right. That? We're yes. That is what we're gonna. That's where we're starting. Okay. Um, Ray, when we get to it, uh, oh, actually, he's on the first page. Ray, I want you to read for Mueller. And then, Larry, when we get to it, you can read for Orion. And Preston and I will read for the other characters because they're only going to matter for this page. Well, there's a, there's a few other random – yeah, there's random people throughout. But those are the two people that are going to be doing most of the dialogue will be Mueller and Orion. So – all right. Exterior, skies over southern North Sea, day. Uh, fish eye, telescope POV. Telescope viewer watches as Long Fu and the Nazi brute fall from the airship. Not a master class strategist, are we? Exterior, skies over London, falling. I'm pretty sure London is way closer to the English Channel. Uh, and you can't really see it from the North Sea, but anyways... Uh, Lung Fu uses the whip chain to pull the Nazi brute towards her. As he closes in, she kicks him in the chest, sending him spinning past her. They continue falling, the Nazi brute about half a meter below Lung Fu. I hope you're softer than you look. The Nazi brute looks down. Freak uh, mich. Uh, exterior, bombed out building, falling day. Long Fu and the Nazi brute crash through the partially demolished ruins of a bombed out building. Interior bombed out building. Uh, the Nazi brute hits the pavement in echoing thump seconds before Long Fu crashes on top of him. Ow. Long Fu slowly and painfully rolls over to her back. Ow, ow, ow. Long Fu takes a deep breath. She turns to the dead Nazi brute laying beside her. His blood seeping across the floor slowly begins to hiss and crackle. Long Fu crawls away quickly as his blood turns corrosive, eating it to the floor. What in God's name were they feeding you? Kaboom! Above her, the Northeast Zeppelin bomber explodes. Kaboom. Exterior, SMS Ernst von Hepner. Uh, deck. Joseph Mueller pulls back sharply from the massive telescope mounted to the front of the airship deck as the flash of the explosion crosses the front of the lens. Super, South North Sea, 4,500 meters above sea level. A massive airship branding the Nazi swastika on the tail fin hovers 4,500 meters above the southern border of the Doris Sea. The explosion of the airship is merely a bright dot on the horizon. Mueller picks up a notebook off a small table and writes. Lip, lip shot die? I don't know. That's MK. Okay. <laughs> My field test results. Subject engaged in heretic in hand-to-hand -hand combat. What I lacked in tactics clearly made up in brute strength. Ring, ring. Mueller answer the ringing phone on the table beside him before turning towards the gon toward the gondola. The airship captain holds, stands by the window, looking down at him. Now, Preston, you want to do the captain? Herr Mueller, <laughs> the American has arrived. Danke. Return to base. Yeah, here. <laughs> Exterior, Sanamar, Eiffel Tower, Mooring Mast. 
the docking mechanism on the top of the Eiffel Tower clamps onto the nose of the SMS to Ernst von Hefner front canopy. Several flight techs r roll up from a mobile staircase toward a platform gate. Mueller descends, finding an intelligence officer in a suit standing with Orion, a young woman with fiery red hair, deep blue eyes, wearing a red and white plaid dress. Welcome to Paris. I am acquainted with your father. All right, Larry. You're up. Put on your best girl voice. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, I know based on his note, you are the only one that can give me what I want. And what is that? I want the girl the allies call the Avatar dead. Sorry to disappoint you, child. The Avatar fell 1,500 meters not two hours ago. I assure you, she is quite dead. Herr Mueller, our initial assessment may not be correct. The heretic survived the fall. Fascinating. Well, Miss... Orion, just Orion. Mueller smiles. Perhaps we may be able to help each other after all this way. Interior, underground freight elevator. Window list. It's a freight elevator, of course. It's window. Anyway, Mueller and Orion stand in the elevator. I'm not Mueller. No, oh, he's oh, no. Oh, yeah. you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I got so wrapped up in the story. There we go. You were just reading those <laughs> messages we heard. Come on. I, I was. Oh, my God. Just now you called her the heretic. Why? The allies believe her to be an avatar of God here to enact his holy vengeance against us. And you don't believe that? I mean, it does seem a little fantastic. <laughs> A little? I, think, I mean, I mean, no. you don't believe that? I don't know. It seems a little odd. <laughs> I think I heard this one before. Yeah. Nothing but American propaganda. God would never impart his power upon a woman, let alone a chink one. Oh. Beep. The elevator stops. The door is open. Interior. Hikate Biolab. Training room. Underground. Underground is not a time of day, John. Yeah, well, if I put day and then you say it's underground, you're going to complain that there's no windows. And how do we know it's day? Uh, I, I, underground is fine because that means that there's no day. Or Interior, night. underground, Hecate <laughs> Bio Lab. Oh, that's here. true. Oh, that's a good point. <coughs> like Whatever. exterior space. You don't need day or night for that either. Well, I mean, theoretically, they, they could draw in windows. So you, you go yes. windowless. Well, dust. There could be like dust falling from the ceiling too, right? Okay. Well, that would happen day or night. Yeah, and my artist is not going to be drawing dust falling from the sky. <laughs> uh, <laughs> not that, at the was... budget that I'm paying him. Oh I mean, <laughs> this script is well above your usual. And you should, you know, increase your uh, standards. Uh, Mueller and Orion stand watching as two Nazi brutes box on a mat. We are on the brink of biotechnology and engineering, a new breed of soldier. They are stronger, faster, tougher than anyone on the battlefield. I am going to make you my masterpiece. Walk with me. One of them costs one million dollars, six million dollars. That's it. <laughs> the six million dollar man reference, right? <laughs> uh, interior, Hikate Biolab, operating room, underground. Orion lays back on a steel table. Three doctors wearing full biohazmat suits attend her. That seems anachronistic. Uh, one places an IV into her arm as another hooks her up to an EG machine via pads on her forehead and chest. Another doctor opens a small lead lined box, causing a Geiger counter to tick, tick, tick like crazy. Orion looks over at it, the only one in the room without protection. The doctor removes a baseball-sized Hecate stone from the box, breaks off a piece. Afterwards, he returns the stone to the lead line box, closing it. The doctor places the shard into a mortar and grinds it into a fine powder with the pestle. Afterwards, he pours it into a white, milky liquid boiling over a Bunsen burner. The green powder turns the liquid green. 
That's what it does. Interior, Hikate Biolab, observation room underground. Mueller stands watching through a thick glass window. Another doctor stands beside him taking notes. Preston, you want to be the doctor? I recommend we reduce the dosage to account for her lower body mass. Nine. She's barely over 53 kilos. That could kill her. We've never tested this on a woman either. Let's see how her biology oh. accepts, handles it. What? Accepts, no, that's it. because it was. I reworded the line and I left in a word that should have been cut. This is why we read all the words. No about how her biology says. handles it. Yeah. Maintain the correct yes. dosage. Your hair. The doctor presses on the call box. Proceed with the injection. Operating room. The doctor takes a steel needle from the drawer, draws back the boiling green liquid. He approaches Orion. This is your last chance to back out. That bitch is responsible for killing my father, so man up and stick me. The doctor turns to the others who proceed to strap Orion down to the table. Afterward, they place a bit into her mouth. This might sting a little. The doctor shoves the needle into Orion's neck, injecting the liquid. Orion clamps down on the bit as the serum races through her veins. Her, vi her vitals on the EEG spike, her muscles tighten, oh. she struggles against the straps, her eyes glow, go bloodshot. What's going to happen? Uh, she's going to be feeling like this uh, series. Okay. Yeah. Clearly, because this is the Captain America origin scene, like line for fucking line. Right. <laughs> um, after okay. a few seconds, she collapses. The EG sends out a flat line. She's, she's crashing. Gets the paddles. The doctor removes the bit, placing a bag valve mask over Orion's face. Observation room. Mueller watches the commotion in the operation room as the doctors attempt to revive Orion. Clear. Zap. <laughs> oh, if you ever do do this into a movie, you're going to have to get Preston to do the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> well, child, time to see what you're made of. Will you fight or will you fold? Clear. Zap. Operating room. Orion snaps back to consciousness, letting out a loud scream. Observation room. Mueller smiles. Yarika. Uh, interior. Orion's quarters. Day. A small windowless room featuring a bed chair and small dresser with vanity mirror. Oh, yeah. Orion kneels down beside the bed, pulling a suitcase out from underneath. She opens it, eyeing the contents. Knock, knock. Come in. The door opens as Mueller lets himself in. I see you are settling in. You must be hungry. I am. Good to be. Be sure to eat heartily and rest up. Your training starts tomorrow. We'll also need to fit you in uniform. No need. I brought my own. I see you have. Uh, I'm sorry. Mueller follows Orion's gaze to the contents of the suitcase. I see you have. Welcome to the Lapshmir Corpse. Dun, dun, dun. All right. To be continued. To be continued. Well, stuff happened. It was it was, it was exciting stuff. There were syringes and secret injections and secret clandestine laboratories and Nazi scientists and Nazi strongmen and Zeppelins and uh, the English Channel, and London. I mean, I, I can't think of anything you missed, really. I think you, you got it all. Um, congratulations. Uh, yeah, I think this continues from your opening sequence quite appropriately and raises the stakes uh, while making it very clear that Long Fu is the protagonist of this arc of the story. Larry. Yes. There. Excellent feedback as always. Yeah. Larry. Yeah. <laughs> Good job, Larry. Yeah. I appreciate that. I will yeah. go in my notes. All right. <laughs> yeah, I like the flow of it. It it went really well. Like there were a, a few parts with the dialogue. I, uh, there was uh, the one 
I think there was a small line after. I can't remember what the heck it was, though. But he mentioned something about uh, where Mueller actually mentioned something, and there was like a two-word sentence after what he said. And I was like, well, he didn't really need that in there. But other than that, though, yeah, it flowed real good. And the description of the scenes were great. I see. Uh, we have a new addition. Welcome, Bit Rush. I don't suppose you heard any of John's script. No, nah, I was eating dinner. Sorry, guys. Yeah, I, uh, I just hopped on. Okay. Constructives? Anyway, we got any constructives? Oh yeah, always. All right, go. All for right, it, Danny, then. lay it on me. What's you know wrong what with that? You totally missed, despite Preston's very thorough accounting of what you didn't. You missed an opportunity to. Bedazzle her chest with Hecate Stone. <laughs> there you go. Make a better supervillain that is chestier and also has shiny boobs. I thought this was a John Lamont script. The <laughs> <laughs> um, so doctor so, could go, the vagina gun? Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> so, like, yeah, I don't know what you were thinking there. I mean, that you still get to use the uniform for a bit and just like. You can sort of hide some of the, like, you don't need to see too, too much of the procedure. But, like, yeah, no, it was fine. And, it, again, the pacing was really good. And um, I think the narrower focus at this stage of the story makes everything flow better. So, yeah, th that was it. It was just, like, how did you not, like, bedazzle her chest? So that that's my constructive. So what you you want like? I want shiny like, boobs, <laughs> shiny radioactive boobs. It's the forties. People didn't know how bad this stuff was. I didn't even think they had like um, defibrillators at that time. Actually, I have to probably double check that. Yeah, I, I think, think they, they did. Or hazmat suits. You, you well, got all the German technology was ahead at the time, but was. like. Yeah, just implant the stone into her and then make it a character design thing. And then you have like a cool villain with shiny boobs. You can sell all the posters and all the covers. What do you do with that? I might, I'd have to change her color, color scheme, though. I mean, you, you can, again, you can hide that that's what happened and put her in the uniform and then just make that the, the reveal. It doesn't have to be an injection. That's all I'm saying. Hide the injection and then you're 50 50 on the whole thing. Um, oh, and I guess you missed a line of action explaining how the scientist breaks the Hikate stone, uh, it, presumably with his hands. So, oh, uh, okay, you you are correct on that. Yes, yeah, it, it's a stone chisel. Yeah, so you know, do the thing. He breaks the stone up. Cut away. You see her being really bloodshot. It's just her face. You know, three episodes later, she gets injured in combat. She has this massive, glowing green radioactive titties and then like everybody's happy man best titties see <laughs> preston's realizing he he may not uh, you may have indeed forgotten a thing that he likes so yeah that's my one constructive okay wow <laughs> I don't know what's going on, but bedazzled titty sounds good to me. See? <laughs> I'm sure Larry and Ray have something. So, or I, he's already said. Does, does Preston have any constructives? Nah, sounds good. Uh, yeah, it was just that one line with Mueller. It kind of caught me off guard. I was like, well, didn't really need that one spot. But other than that, I wish I could remember what the heck it was now. But. I'm sure you'll go. You'll find it. Way, though, overall, we quite liked it. Yeah, it was good. Well, thanks, guys. All right, let's take a look at. Uh, I hate the morning. This time with a bit of art direction. <laughs> who Who would you like to narrate, sir? Um, we'll get John to narrate. John. All right. Now I noticed you didn't go really lavish on on the art direction. It's, uh, but I'll, I'll I'll take what I can get. So, yeah. Thank you for that. <laughs> All right, John. I hate the morning. 
Page one, panel one, shadows. Panel two, dark shadows with specks of dirt and dust falling. Creak. Panel three, side of coffin. Thud. Panel four, the coffin lid slammed shut. Bang. Panel five, a close-up of the evil eyes. Page two, panel one, Tommy standing in the center with one arm in the air. I, Tommy, proclaim the party has started. Panel two, Tyrell puts his hand on Tommy's shoulder. Easy, buddy. We got the big game tomorrow. Panel three, Ellen is leaning over to talk to Grace. Looks like somebody doesn't want to be here. Panel four, Steve and Natalia on the side. Natalie's, Natalia's arms are crossed. We just got here. Panel five, Grace and Ellen are continuing to gossip. I heard that Natalia is cheating on Steve. Let's not go there. They're going to talk about panel that right six. in front of Steve. Man, that's hardcore. Tom, panel, panel six, Tommy is about to toss a beer to Steve. Steve, go deep. Larry. Larry. You guys are such clowns. There we go. Good one. Page three, panel one. Tyrell talking to Natalia on the side. So where are we going to meet again? I'm Steve. Who's Natalia? All right, it'll be Natalia. Not now. Uh, panel two. Steve wanders, wanders over to Tyrell and Natalia. And I'm still Steve. Hey, what do you think of our chances of winning that game tomorrow? Steve, I would be concerned about your girlfriend, but whatever. <laughs> Panel three, Tyrell and Steve joking around. By the looks of how you caught that beer, you should be on the team. Panel four, Ellen looks at Grace. Hmm. No. Panel five, Miguel, Tommy, and Mike in a small circle. It was Miguel again. Oh, that okay. was Larry. That was Larry. Larry, oh, yeah. Larry. Uh, Larry. Oh, okay, a couple more, and we call it a night. Coach is going to freak if he knows we're out. Panel six, close on up on Tommy. No worries. We are almost out of beer. Page four, panel one. Tommy is poking the fire with a stick. Everyone else sitting around and standing by the fire. Anybody have some gas? What's a party without a giant fire? We don't need gas. Oh, I guess somebody else is lying. Sorry. These guys are crazy. Panel two. Tommy is still standing over the fire. Mike and Terrell standing beside him. This fire looks sad. Sad fire. Panel three. Ellen sitting in a chair looking at her phone. The reception out here sucks. I can't get any bars. Panel four. <laughs> Mid shot of Tommy. Uh, I got one big bar for you. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Panel five. Mike walks over to the wood pile to chop wood. Tommy playing an air guitar. Uh, I don't know. Tommy. Uh, uh, Mike's got the axe. He's got the axe. 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 He's got the axe. Panel six. Mike that swings. is the longest line of dialogue in your entire script. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Panel six. Mike swings the axe over his head. Ah. Page five. Panel one. The head of the axe breaks off and yeah. goes flying in the air. Whoosh. Whoosh. Panel two. Blood splatter. Splat. Panel three. Close up on Mike. Fuck. Panel four. Tommy pointing to the axe in his shoulder. Ouch, Tommy. Panel five. Pictures of the rest of the crowd's faces. Tyrell and Natalia, Ellen, Miguel, Steve, Grace. Panel six. Panel six. Out. Tommy oh, hits the ground. Oh, I'm sorry. Tommy hits the ground, and everyone is running to his aid except Ellen. She is still on her phone. 
Uh, shit. No way. I know this is crazy. There's no reception out here. Page six, panel one. <laughs> the woods behind everyone. Boom. Panel two, close up on Ellen. Did, Did you, you hear, hear that, that boom? boom? Maybe it was the cell tower exploding. Panel three, Ellen is on is on her chair and Grace is yelling at her from the group. Ellen, Tawny is hurt. Get your head out of your phone. Panel four, mid shot of Miguel. Uh, Who's Miguel? We need to wrap up that wound and gel. Get him to a hospital, sir. Panel five. Miguel helps Tommy and everyone is behind. Hurry up and get your stuff. The party is over. Page seven. Panel one. Ellen talking to Natalia. I don't know why Grace is so bent out of shape. Like my phone wouldn't come up and pretty wouldn't wouldn't have come up pretty handy if it worked. Uh, my phone isn't working either. We are too far out from anywhere to get a signal. I wonder if they're too far out from anywhere to get a signal. Yeah. Panel two. I don't know. I'd, it's very. I'm very confused. <laughs> Panel two. Mid shot of Ellen. My followers are interested in what I'm doing. I need to keep them updated. Panel three. Grace looking over Ellen and Natalia. Are you are you two ready? We need to go. Panel four. Steve is talking. To, I just got a brilliant idea and. Hopefully, I won't forget it when we get to talking about it. Panel four, Steve well, is if talking. If it's really brilliant, you don't want to okay. take a chance. So, if if you need to have like Ellen like taking pictures for her Instagram followers oh, of yeah, Tommy with the great. axe, like <laughs> running up, like this is like the most exciting thing that's ever happened. She can still be bitching about not having internet reception and have to like stream it later, you know, like after the fact. But she should be like totally on top of that, like taking pictures, doing selfies with it, you know, like those people, those people that do selfies in front of burning buildings and natural disasters. She should be like lying down next to him, trying to do selfies while, uh, yeah. I have to just... agree with this. Um, <laughs> go, go nuts, dude. <laughs> It'll at least something interesting will happen while all this chaos is going. Boy, no crits while we're reading the script. Panel go. four, Steve is talking to Miguel, who has Tommy pro propped up. Well, this is a pity party to be remembered. Can you handle walking with Tommy? Like they say, party like a rock star. Panel five. How's he walking, though? Panel five. Miguel with Tommy on his side. It's about a 20-minute walk back to the car. I'll manage, but thanks for the offer. Panel okay. six. Natalia walking to the group. We will just leave all the big stuff and come back tomorrow for it. Panel seven, because this page needs seven panels. Mike is on his <laughs> knees distraught as Tyrell walks to him. Come on, Mike. We got to go. I don't know what happened. It was an accident. Page eight, panel one. The group is walking alone. Grace is pointing to the distance. We parked Wherever over Grace here. Is. Panel two. Ellen is consoling Mike. It's okay, Mike. It was just an accident. Mike. Go, who's Mike's line? I know. I just feel terrible about it all. Panel three. Tyrell is talking with Ellen and Mike. Of course I have. I must have dropped them all at the camp. Or dropped them at the camp. Well, He's... wait, wait. Before you get there, we got this line up here. Ah. Right there, that one. Uh, I don't have my keys. Good luck. Have you checked your pockets? Of course I have. I must have dropped them at the camp. Panel four, the woods, Tyrell. Oops, the woods. Now you got this. Thing. I have to go back and get them. Panel five, close up on Tyrell. I'm going back. Don't worry. I'll catch up. We aren't that far anyway. Panel six, Tyrell running back to camp. I wonder if Page. he's going to go get his keys. He must have forgotten them at the camp. He has to go back to get them. Don't worry. He'll go back to get them. Page nine, panel one, Tyrell looking with his phone light and a famished vampire is lurking on the ground. Panel two, Tyrell looks at his finger. Ouch, must have cut my finger on the glass. 
panel three. Tyrell leans over to pick up his keys. Here they are. Panel four. Tyrell tosses his keys in the air as the vampire is behind him about to strike. All right. Time to catch up to everyone. They got to be getting close to. Page 10. Panel one. Close up on Grace. Where the hell is Tyrell? Panel two. Ellen talks to Grace mid-shot. He just ran back to the camp to get to look for his keys. Are you kidding me? You let my brother go back alone in the woods? He's going to get lost. Panel three, mid shot of Mike. Who's Mike? He's probably on his way back already. Panel four, Miguel interrupts Grace, Mike, and Ellen. We need to keep moving. I don't know how much more time. Ta- I don't know how much more Tommy has. Panel 5. The group is moving along. Panel 6. Identical to Panel 5, except Mike is gone from the tail of the group. Is that, yeah, are we going to... You want us to keep going? I, I, I guess that's 10 pages, right? That's mm-hmm. 10 pages. That would be 10 pages. Yeah, okay, it's 10 yeah. pages. So, uh, I want to... We, we have a vampire... We have teenagers out in the woods. We have art direction. It's <laughs> hard to imagine. Yeah, we have characterization. Uh, Steve's girlfriend is a slut. Um, <laughs> we have some vapid people on Instagram. I mean, I think the script has has everything it needs, really. I, I can't imagine it going too much. You know, well, well, maybe there might be a, a constructive or two, but still, good effort. I like it. Cool. Yeah, I agree. Um, the characterization helps a lot. There's, I mean, I'm going to say it anyways, there's still way too many characters, but at least like we have some ideas about who some of them are now. So I, I, some of them are more likable or more re- remarkable, and that vastly improves uh, this entire setup. Cool. Yes, I will ditto on that. Um, the characters, some of the characters did seem much more unique and interesting. Um, so that worked. Uh, art direction helped out a lot at that. Um, and I really didn't have a problem with the minimalism on the art direction in a lot of the times. I mean, you're the artist, so you clearly know in your head what you're going to write. And I think you conveyed enough to us as readers that we get what's in the panel. You know, it's not like you have to go through these great details to describe scenes and stuff because you already know what it's going to look like once you draw it. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Larry? Uh, we doing positive or constructive? Positive. positive. Um, it's a good horror story. Seems to have me moving at a good pace that way, so... You're going in the right direction. All right. Bit rush, what do you think? Yeah, um, I like the party scene. Um, I have a few things to say about that, but I'll save it for the constructives, I guess. But I liked uh, you know, that part of it. It really set the the vibe, like you got a good idea of a bunch of people just out in the woods partying and having a good time, joking around. Um, good setup for, you know. Uh, vampire. Okay, cool. Thanks, guys. Uh, constructives. Uh, all right. I just want to, you know, I know you, you, you focus on the artwork as well you should, uh, but there, there are some passives, and I, I, they, they, they pain me every time, you know, like I just, it's I, just pet peeve. They're, it they're, really they're, is. They're, they're painful. They're very painful. And sometimes they're like, I'm like, come on. There's like, one was like a vampire is like, you know, uh, the group is walking along. Grace is pointing in the distance. Ellie is consoling Mike. Tyrell is talking with Ellen. I like every <laughs> one of these is passive. Is you like, you're killing me with this stuff. Um, <laughs> And one of these, like the vampire, is like Grace is been a. Oh wait, that that was dialogue. I mean, you got passives in your dialogue too, but people do actually talk like that sometimes. They they don't know how painful passives are, so I have to I have to let the passives go when they're in the dialogue. But I mean, in the art direction, 
Come on. It's, it's, you know, <laughs> yeah, I, I would say you, you got to get the passives out of the art direction. Then it will inspire the artist, which is you, uh, to draw better. <laughs> so there we go. Um, so yeah, get, get rid of the passives. I mean, we have these characters hanging around for a while. And really, I don't start caring until like somebody gets an axe in 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 you know, in the eye. So um, I I I feel like we sh we could get to the violence faster. You know, like I almost feel like like we could open on just like going off to chop wood and boom, there's an axe, and now we have these teenagers and we're kind of introduced to them in this moment of crisis. I don't know that we really learn much about them, except the fact that Steve's girlfriend is a slut. Um, and Ellen can't get a signal. And Ellen can't get a signal. Yeah, but before that, that is is really interesting. So anyway, that, that's what I got. Um, yeah, I I agree with Preston. Um, actually, on, on a, a, a bunch of things, I'll, although the art direction thing, you know, it's a bit of a joke in the sense that you're um, actually the artist. But if you start thinking in terms of more active verbs, it's actually a really good way to have like character detail or to to think about how the characters are going to be acting as compared to what they're doing. Okay. Uh, so if, if you are going to be writing more script, especially if you're still in like the thumbs or, you know, pre-production stage. Um, yeah. Write with more active verbs and standing around, you know, isn't great. Like, you know, Ellen panics because she has no signal uh, ignoring this other thing that's happening. Like that lets you, write the, the character acting uh, into your script, and that's going to help you. They will actually help you draw better. All right. Um, we still have too many characters, uh, although a lot of them are characterized. They don't actually have names outside of the fact that the script has their names. So if a character doesn't say another character's name, then we're not going to remember who that is, right? So for the final product, basically anyone who you haven't named directly, we can assume is disposable. Well, um, I did have a part in there too, where they, they got all their heads and they name off who they you, are. That was only like I five people. Was Those are your main characters. The What's other that? Like 10 characters. That was only like five people though, not like all 10 of them. No, it was all of them. Uh, I, I recall it not being all of them, but okay. Um, at any rate, so if you don't, do that, then anyone who you don't name is going to be obviously disposable. Um, not enough vampire after the first couple pages. I want put, you're in the forest. Put the vampire in the trees. I want a vampire well, everywhere. I did have the vampire at the beginning there, but then uh, and that you was had a great. coffin at the beginning. Yeah, well, you see his eyes, I guess. But there's a vampire in the beginning, and then there is no vampire for like eight pages. There's a vampire at the end. And we yeah. have the vampire slowly crawling around, maybe spying on the, you know, perking up when someone gets a sucking chest wound, that kind of thing. The background vampire is going to work to your advantage here. Uh, oh, yeah, he should be like that. that meme dude that's, like, rubbing his hands and licking his lips when the guy gets chopped through the Yeah, head. man. <laughs> like, uh, that would be per – like, that would be – perfect to have like him like doing that when there's this gaping chest wound because you know supposedly vampires can smell blood and all that uh and then you have a lot of really repetitive dialogue where you could instead have arguments uh which would arguments would help with characterizations because it's not like oh what's up with tyrell oh i'm gonna go back for my keys like he says that like seven times on the same page we got it um and, and like you know the no bars thing is like that's a background joke uh but the going for the keys thing is just like announcing action like tyrell you always lose your keys you're such an idiot just uh, hurry up like this takes longer than 20 minutes what if he falls down and the axe goes further in his chest he could die you know like yeah. we have all this room to explain what's going on to to add complexity to the situation to add character dynamics to the situation and so um in your revision of the dialogue, uh, I would really look towards that repetition as places where you can sort of expand uh, the characters and how we understand them. Cool, I'm gonna jump in here. Um, 
Go ahead. We go with Lamont's idea earlier of uh, the selfie thing. It would be funny to have the vampire like hidden in the background of a selfie, and she doesn't realize that he's there till later, like the next day or something. Um, I think that'd be funny. Kind of like a null point on um, the art, but I would like to see a little bit more of like who these people are. Are they, you know, tall, skinny, short, fat, whatever? What kind of clothes are they wearing? Um, just for like reading it, I know you're the artist, so like I said, it's kind of like you know not really that important for you. Um, I Never also, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it would be funny too, like while he's swinging the axe, if you had like music, some sort of like lyric from a song coming out of a radio that would like some kind of like classic rock song or something. Well, that's um, what uh, Tommy was doing when he was playing the air guitar. He's yeah, like that's easy DC reference, right? Oh, it was okay. I didn't get yeah. that done. Okay, my bad. Uh, but yeah, I, f- I felt like it needed like some sort of music there. And then the other thing with all the, like the dudes and the chicks, there should be like somebody should be like hooking up in the woods with the vampire lurking. Totes. Then you have an opportunity for boobs. Yeah. <laughs> well, there might be boobs Boop later. In the on. woods is a genre. Yeah. Well, that's kind of like classic horror, right? Like Jason, like they're always like in the tent about to do it right before he fucking slices their head off. Yeah, good point. So I'm going to echo the you've got too many characters. And I feel like the reason and I know you want a lot of characters because you want disposable the bodies. I get that. But I feel like the characters are just, they're not doing anything interesting. So they kind of all blend together into one homogenous group. Like besides Ellen, who is unique in that she's wandering around the woods where she knows that there's no cell signal, trying to get a cell signal, and she doesn't stop bitching about it. You had like two or three other female characters, and for the life of me, I don't know a single thing about any of them. Um, so I kind of – and I got another thought when Bitrush was talking or Danny was that it might be helpful to consider background visual gags. So for example, we really only need one panel of Ellen trying to get a cell phone signal. The rest of the do- the rest of the time, you could literally just have her in the background of another panel trying to get a cell phone signal. Like and just do that. Like rather than keep coming back to her trying to get a signal, giving her her own panel space, you can have two other characters, you know, doing some maybe one the dude's doing the air guitar, then you just say in the background, Ellen is standing trying to get a cell phone signal with her phone. Like she doesn't need to ground, keep... and then the axe head flies right past her, but she doesn't notice because she's taking a selfie. Right, like you can no. you can play into the characters and their and that when you do it. Um, so I think maybe think more in terms of that, and then going back to like the making out in the tent idea, you could have two of them running off. You know, maybe the slut and the dude that she's sleeping around with, with her boyfriend on the side run off in the back of the woods somewhere, and they're all you know getting all handsy and all that in the background and that can be a background gag and like all of these things can be going on in the background which also comes to think of it when they're all trying to leave rather than him going back for the keys it would probably be more interesting if they all get to the car and they realize oh wait two people are missing well where is slut girl and doofus i don't know and then we cut slut girl and doofus (laughs) making out when the vampire shows up and basically you know attacks one of them then we get an interesting action scene then the girl runs away and her shirt gets ripped and she got titties flying out everywhere she's running through the woods classic slasher you know teens in the woods story trope yeah um so i think something like that might work better if you if you think of you know give each character a, a thing that they they are doing like what are they doing in that moment and then just have them do that like what is their character or what are they there to do what do they want um and just focus on those even if you're going to make these all 
car, you know, cardboard cut out two dimensional characters, find that thing that makes that makes them unique and then just have them do that. So if it's slut girl, she should be slut girl. If it's, you know, cell phone girl, it should be cell phone girl. If it's, you know, punk rock dude, it should be punk rock dude. And then the other thing is, and this might have just been an art direction thing, but chest in the axe in the chest, I'm like, a lot of these people are acting like this is no big thing. Some people are acting like it's a big thing. Some people are acting like it's not. Mm-hmm. And I, as the reader, because I can't see it, because your art direction doesn't sh- tell it to me, I don't know how to react. I don't know. Is this a bad chest wound? Is it a good chest wound? The that's guy that's got the guy that got the axe sticking out of his chest is walking around like he's fine, like nobody's putting him on a stretcher. Nobody's trying to do anything like that. Nobody's trying to render first aid. It's like, oh, just let me, you know, put your arm around my shoulder and I'll walk you back to the chi- <laughs> back to the car. And it's like, if he can walk back to the car. It's not going to be – I don't see it as that bad. Just have him put some pressure on it. He lays down on his back, and he's fine, like unless it is that bad. And if it is that bad, then he shouldn't be walking because it's just going to exacerbate this. So I'm very confused with how bad this wound actually is. And it's a minor how, chest wound with an axe. Clear. Well, I mean, there you go. Most Somebody should be trying blunt, to pour whiskey so. on it. The, Most then, axes are pretty blunt, so it's not going to go like right through them. I but mean, axe is very traditionally his chest his arm, with basically. like any force, and I feel like a flying axe head is going to go through some things. Yeah, but also soft, you think, like, like human flesh, like an axe actually flying off, it would be the backside that hits them because it's weighted more, no, so it'd be more likely to not land in their chest. Then, well, either then again, way, it's unclear from what we well, from what exactly we, we we at least from our perspective because we don't know what the art is going to look like and the art is not described. I am unclear as to the severity of this wound, so it makes the reaction and because the characters are reacting either like this is a big deal or it's no big deal. There's nothing in between. The people that say it's no big deal aren't explaining why it's not a big deal. Yeah. So I, I'm kind of confused as to whether it's a big deal. Um, you know, because it could also be that maybe it's better if he just stays there and you split the party and a few of the people go back to the car to go to the nearest hospital or the nearest gas station and call for paramedics you know, drive somewhere where they got a signal. Then you've got Ellen who's like, oh, I totally want to go for this drive because I need freaking internet. You know, just stuff. That's all. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. I got lots of stuff to work on now. (laughs) And unfortunately, you already drew half of it, so. (laughs) Yeah, I got a lot of it drawn out already, but whatever. Um, Now, you can write your way out of that, or if you think it's worth it, like, you know, draw a story with background. Back and do revisions. Yeah, that's fine. It's just paper. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure you can still sell those original pages at a con. Possibly. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's okay. I can go back and do some revisions. Yeah, I I, 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 I had an idea that might solve the too many characters problem. And uh, I mean, it may not be a good idea, but it's an idea. And that's, we could be following the vampire as he's skulking about the camp and the vampire is our focus character. And he's seeing these random campers, but he doesn't really know who they are, which is much like us, the audience, you know? And uh, then when there's the ax handle and stuff's getting real, now he's really taking an interest as is the audience. And now we're just focusing in on like a few characters. And that way we have, you know, that way it reduces the crowd to just random teenagers spouting off lines, which is how the vampire would view them anyway. That's a good idea. Yeah. I like that one. It would also require very little editing to the original art that you've already done too. Or yeah. I say it require less editing of the art that you've already done. If all we have to do is just, 
draw more of the vampire into them. Yeah, she's just add a, like a, a page here too, or or just a couple extra panels or something in a page. Well, do you hand draw or or do you hand draw an ink or is this digital? No, I hand draw everything. So you could scan it into a computer, which you're going to eventually do anyway. Yeah. And then take what the panels on one page and spread them over two pages and then add in additional panels of the vampire watching those scenes. That way it might save you a little bit on some of that redrawing. There you go. Yeah, that works. Would we need captions then for like what the vampire's thinking? Um, possibly. I mean, you can. Or I you mean, cannot. vampires traditionally want to drink human blood. Yeah. We do have a teenager with um, a sucking chest wound that yeah. nobody seems to have a problem with. So I think he's just waiting for everybody else to notice so we can go eat the guy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, if, if, if you just have a vampire skulking about, we know well, why he's there and what he wants. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. think that's pretty obvious. And yeah. then, of course, maybe he's more interested in Slut Girl and what and Doofus Face until yeah. the axe gets thrown. I mean, like that, maybe that, they're that, off that, in the corner, and he's like, "I'm gonna sneak up on them," and then right. axe throw happens, and now he's like, "Ooh, scent of blood," yeah. and that draws yeah. him away, and I mean, that also you, gives us that rising tension, or what? You know, oh, like yeah, he's about it, 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 it gives you a chance for some comedy too, because he can be like stereotypical vampire out for blood, and you know, burrow on his face as he's like. Uh, whatever, and then he hears the comment about Steve's girlfriend, and he's ooh, and he cringes or something. He's like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> he's gotten That's wrapped great. up in the conversation. You know? Or she's not a virgin. It's like, ooh, yeah. no, not virgin, non virgin yeah. blood. I can't have that. Yeah. Anyway, so, yeah. Anyway, well, that's all the scripts we got. Any all righty. Stay on. Oh, thanks for the input, guys. Sure. Very helpful. Well. Danny, we'll miss you uh, being off making movies. I'll, I'll send some pictures of the uh, the fake severed heads and things that we're going to do. Okay. That sounds awesome, man. Fantastic. Have fun. Uh, I wish they paid me, but, you know, that would be nice. work is work. This gets me a lot of the way to a, a union permit, and it, it's a full feature, so I'm just excited to do it. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Get making contacts. Yeah. Yeah. Making movies. Yeah. There you go. All right, everybody. Well, um, we'll see if we get any scripts for next week. And if not, well, then the week after that. I may have uh, Alien Pterodactyls 2. There we go. Like the I, first I, eight pages. I, I, I never got to read Alien Pterodactyls 1. I think we did like six or seven pages and yeah, you didn't like it because it was passive. Okay. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Well, uh, then really don't bring pterodactyls too if there's no if it's all passive. Yeah. Well, I haven't written it yet, but I have it in my notebook. I need to okay. transfer it to the computer, so I'm gonna unpacify it. I, I I'm I'm glad I have I have led you. You know, it it happens. I'm people come and they start sharing their passion for comic books, and after a project or two, they're like tits I'm like <laughs> i'm here for you yeah. <laughs> I, I, I remember john lamont sharing and sharing a tweet where uh other writers on twitter were like how do you keep your readers engaged and wanting to come back for more and john was like i didn't have the heart to tell them tits but like <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, it's it's not what people want to hear. It's That's, not what they want to hear. It's really no. <laughs> it's like they're like uh, too many people, and that we don't. And they all spurged out and left the group, so they're not here yeah. to continue yeah. spurging about the high art of comic art. Right. You know, but yeah, I mean, like they're like it's such this Look, high art form, and it's like I'm doing I mean, an art comic, and it still has boobs. Yeah. You know, like it's purposefully not in like. A toxic male gaze sort of way but like thank god we avoided still that. got that <laughs> yeah <laughs> like and, and that and that book like is meant to be you know to more approach literature than trashy comic stuff it's really low concept um and my higher concept stuff is just like i mean i'm i'm not even like screaming raw tits from yeah. the rooftops right 
uh, aside from today when I definitely was. The wrong <laughs> script of all things. Yeah. <laughs> you were like, um, you just boob opportunity. I, you know, I know that's what John, like, he did a lot more of that in his scripts. Yeah. That seemed like a good opportunity for it. There you go. Well, I will say um, I've been watching a lot of, like, different style movies and really seeing the way that the scenes cut and trying to um, implement some of that into my comic writing where you, you do like the scene transitions and different views. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll, we'll see how it turns out. Cause I have it on in the notebook right now, but we'll see. Oh, how it I'm, ends I'm up. going to probably miss that if you do it this month. All right. Well, well, it's not like we'll we're not going to, sh- it's not yeah. like we can't stop. It's not like we're going to stop streaming just because one person's not here. I'm yeah, you can watch the replay. the replay. I'm actually suggesting uh, that BitRush uh, continues to share his work in progress with us. Yeah. Uh, and then I can catch up for the end of the script in like three weeks. There you yeah. Go. Awesome. Yep. It works. Okay. All right, everybody. everybody wins. Huh. Yeah. All right. I'm going to head out. Cool. See All you right. guys. Good night, everyone. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. All right.